Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's my pleasure to be uh, with you all. Uh, so we are going. We are going to talk about the posterior shear uh, fractures. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide this presentation into three parts. In the first part, we are going very briefly to go over the the classification of tibial plateau fractures and um, uh, try to understand um, how do you choose your approach based on understanding the classification, and then we'll go over the different approaches. In the second part, we'll go over some of the ca some cases that will help elicit some of the principles that we are talking about. And then at the end, we'll go over some special techniques for special fractures, and then we'll go over an algorithm that you could use for management managing these posterior plateau uh, fractures. So, and we all know that that tibia plateau fractures go over a very broad spectrum of injuries. These start from low velocity injuries to high velocity injuries. They are very frequently associated with long term complications. However, if they are reduced well and fixed well, the outcome is usually very favorable. Posterior shearing fractures were less appreciated uh, in the past. And um, till now, they're not very common. However, we are starting to see them more and more because now we recognize them more. Um, however, if we do fail to recognize them or if there is a problem with the or the obtaining anatomical fixation, these usually don't have a very, very favorable outcome. They're usually associated with um, knee instability, which could result in early osteoarthritis. Now, Schatzker, when he... Um, proposed his classification in 1974. This was mainly based on the use of x-rays. At that time, CT was not very common. So it was a two-dimensional representation. And, and he classified these, these, these fractures into our, the well-known classification that we, we know, which helped with, 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 um, uh, with the surgical approaches, mainly depending on where the fracture were. And uh, at that time, they, proposed two main um, approaches, the anterolateral approach and the postural medial approach. However, with time, people started recognizing these coronal plane uh, fractures and started seeing these, 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 these injuries to the posterior part of the, of the plateau. But because the fracture, the classification did not address these fractures very cl clearly, they were usually um, missed. And sometimes they would, you would see the fracture, but they were not uh, fixed because people didn't know how to um, uh, approach them. In 2010, Kong Ping Lo and his group uh, proposed the three-column uh, classification of the tibial plateau in which he addressed these posterior um, uh, injuries. He divided the tibial plateau into a medial and lateral column as well as a posterior uh, column. And, and the posterior column injuries will usually result from flexion uh, injuries. Now, the beauty of this classification that it, it laid the way for new approaches to the tibial plateau. We know the anterolateral approach as well as the posterior medial approach, but now since people started recognizing these, uh, these, these injuries in the posterior uh, plateau, new approaches started to be uh, developed. Uh, there are some of those that address the the uh, the posterior me the posterior medial part, the posterior lateral part. We have approaches that go through the um, um, uh, the uh, uh, fibular uh, the proximal fibular uh, neck, and we have other approaches. Now you could extend the anterolateral approach through an epicondyle osteotomy, and that will give you an extensive approach uh, that that would give you access to the whole the, almost the whole of the lateral of the lateral condyle um this led Schatzker to revise his his tibial plateau fracture and in um in a in a in a in a publication that came out a few years ago they also started recognizing these uh posterior injuries um and 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 they divided the pro the the, the uh, tibia plateau into four quadrants not equal but they are into four quadrants an anterolateral anteromedial and a posteromedial and a posterolateral and this started um, um uh, people became more familiar and and started looking and picking up these injuries uh, more frequently. So let's go over some, some, uh, some cases to elicit this. Um, 
uh, this first case is a 34-year-old female nurse who fell from a height while she was hiking. She came complaining of knee pain. This neurovascular was intact. Initially, looking at the AP, you could see that there is a radiolucent um, shadow here. Uh, the lateral plateau in, in, in general looks, looks okay. Uh, there may be something in the medial, but as you look into the lateral, you could immediately see that there is something wrong here at the, at the posterior, at the posterior part of the top plateau. Doing the CT scan, you could easily see, see now that there's a shear fracture in the posterior, um, uh, plateau. Uh, and there was also a, a, a depression, um, element. So this was approached through a uh, postrolateral uh, approach. Um, uh, the uh, the shear fracture was addressed with a buttress uh, plate. Uh, the depression was um, elevated through the fracture initially, and these screws were used as a wrapped screw to support the uh, depression in the uh, in the posterior uh, in the posterior column. Uh, this is um, uh, uh, a follow-up picture, and this is the follow-up at about five years. She was having a very good range of um, uh, of motion with a very stable knee. Now, the second case is a 29-year-old male who was a military um, officer. He was involved in a motor vehicle accident. Um, he had an associated head and abdominal injury. He was in ICU for a couple of days. The X-ray of the knee again. You could see that there is something going on here in the in the um, um, in the in the lateral part of the t of the of the of the of the, of the proximal tibia. There is a line extending down here, and there is something that looks like a second fracture, which may suggest an ACL tear. Now, doing the CT scan again, you could see that there is comminution and there is a shear fracture of the posterior of the postromedial. Uh, plateau, and here going into the uh, into the the coronal views, you could clearly see that there is a shear with comminution of the posterior rim of the uh, uh, of the uh, tibial plateau, as well as a an evolution of the AC uh, ACL. So this was approached initially. We used a, a postromedial plate to address the fracture in the medial condyle, and then an, 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 uh, another approach to the to the lateral uh, condyle was 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 performed in order to um, address the posterior shear uh, with a buttress uh, plate. Um, and then the patient uh, was was um, uh, had an anterior uh, approach where the ACL was was um, uh, anchored with the use of heavy sutures. Um, on follow up, this is the follow up at about one year. He was having still he was um, uh, having some pain in the um, uh, in the in the knee. However, his range of motion was reasonable. At five years, um, he, he, the pain had disappeared. Um, he, it, there was evidence of, of some laxity in the, in the knee. However, the patient didn't want to have anything, uh, done for him at that, at that, at that stage. The third case is a 43 year old male, uh, was, who was transferred from another hospital three days after a history of fall. The AP X ray again shows that there is, there is a lesion on the medial side, which looks like the, the depression fracture, and there is something here on the lateral side. Uh, he was taken to the operating room where he had an X-fix applied because of um, severe soft tissue uh, swelling. And on the lateral, you could clearly see this, there's a shear fracture here on the lateral condyle. The CT scan was done after the application of the um, X fix, and you could clearly see that there is severe comminution um, uh, in, the, in the lateral condyle as well as a depression on the medial on the medial side. Uh, this was approached through a transfibular approach, and um, we through the fracture itself, uh, the depression on the medial side was elevated, and a screw was put there as as a small rafting for it and then two plates were put one was put posterolateral through the same approach to support the uh, the uh, shear fracture and another one was put on the lateral side to to support the, the fixation this uh, x-ray was obtained today i was fortunate that we had him in the clinic today so we took this x-ray 
and uh, we added it to the to the presentation. Um, so the these principles, as you could see, remain the same. Whenever you have a, 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 a shear fragment, you try to buttress that and use that buttress uh, plate over the area uh, where you have this column fracture and the and, and the, she the, the the shearing has uh, has occurred. Uh, if there is comminution, uh, then uh, we usually result, especially in the metaphysis, you would use a plate in the form of a bridging plate to address to address that. Now, in some situations where you have a bicondylar involvement of the uh, uh, posterior uh, plateau, uh, you may need some special uh, tricks to address this. This is a, uh, um, uh, a publication from 2016 by... Uh, Vincenzo Cordano from Brazil, in which he described using a one-third tubular plate that is contoured in a special way that you put it around the posterior um, uh, tibial plateau. You 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 need two approaches: a, a, a medial or posteromedial approach to to expose the the posteromedial part, and then a lateral um, uh, approach. He used here a trans uh, fibular approach. Um, in order to uh, address the fracture on the on the on the lateral on the lateral side, after that, once you have you have reduced your fracture and fixed it with your K wires, you pass a um, periosteliator or a small cup around the uh, the t the tibia from the posterior aspect uh, in a subperiosteal dissection. And once you've done that, then you pass a pre-contoured one-third tubular uh, plate. Uh, from lateral to medial, uh, on the la on the medial once once th this comes out on the on the lateral side, you hook it with a screw on the medial side. And then use a pointed reduction forceps to close that uh, plate, and this will uh, this will create tension on the posterior uh, plateau and help in the reduction of the um, of the uh, of the posterior of the posterior um, elements. Um, the, their conclusion was that this plate, which they called the hoop plate, may be a good um, uh, alternative for the management of extensive tibial plateau articular fractures with impaction, um, especially of the posterior uh, rim. Now, to conclude uh, what we've talked about, I would like to present this 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 algorithm that was also presented by Gordano and his and his group, where they did a review of the literature and looked at the different patterns of posterior uh, plateau fractures and the different approaches that are used to address this. And then they came up with an algorithm um, to address this. And they 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 mainly looked at the posterior fragments um in in these in the context of being a pure split fracture uh, split with a depression or if there is a pure depression on the medial side uh, which could be contained or non uh, contained so when you have a shear type posterior lateral tibial plateau fractures it could be one of three it could be an isolated posterior uh, tibial plateau fracture it could be a complex lateral plateau fracture or it could be a bilateral uh, lat uh, bilateral uh, condylar fractures. In the case of a isolated posterior lateral plateau fractures, they suggested a, po a posterior lateral approach utilizing something like a Carlson approach where the patient is placed in a prone position and you do a direct posterior approach and use a buttressing technique as described before. In case you have a complex lateral tibial plateau fracture, then you may use something like a posterolateral um, uh, approach in the lateral uh, uh, position. You may also use a transfibular neck osteotomy. This gives you a better uh, uh, exposure of the lateral uh, condyle. And in some situations, you may use an extended extended anterolateral approach with a, a, a with a femoral epicondyle osteotomy however this approach doesn't give you a a a, a, a good access you could look at the posterolateral uh, piece but it becomes a little bit tricky to put your plate uh, through this this approach and lastly if you have uh, posterior uh, bicondylar plateau fractures, then you could use a um, the the uh, Kung Fing Lo approach, uh, which is uh, a post an inverted L uh, 
uh, shape uh, approach to the medial condyle in the prone position. However, the patient may need to know that he will also need an, a, a lateral approach as it may become difficult to approach the lateral condyle through this uh, through this approach. So usually if there's a posterior bicondylar tibial plateau fracture, it may be easier to use two approaches as I showed in some of the cases we presented. Now, if you have a rim fracture of the posterolateral tibial plateau, it is one of two situations. Either it is an, a, a, a contained pure depression or it is a non-contained. Non-contained means that there is there is a lot of comminution with the with the de depression. In these situations, you may um, use a Lopenhoff um, transfibular uh, osteotomy, where the patient is in a supine position, and you have a direct approach to the postulator exposure, and 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 we use the same principles we've used for the uh, uh, for, for 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 the other fractures. Um, if you have a uh, uh, if if, if you may also use an extender anterolateral approach and use a uh, the hoop plate uh, concept that we've discussed before. If there is a medial cortical, uh, if you have a purely depression, you may use a medial cortical window uh, to approach this to elevate the depression um, as we do for an for an anterolateral depression uh, in the same way and uh, uh, use the fluoroscopy or arthroscopy to assess uh, your uh, reduction and then use sub subchondral screws as a rafting technique to support uh, the fixation. So in summary, these are not as common as the anterior, the, um, as the lateral and the medial condyle injuries. However, if they are missed, they can cause a lot of knee instability. It is very crucial to understand the injury, which side needs to be approached, where do you have the shearing injury, because you need to approach uh, the posterior element from the place, from, from the direction where you are going to put your uh, buttress plate. For shear, shear injuries, we still use the buttress plate as we do for the an anterolateral fractures. For rim fractures, especially with comminution or involving both condyles, you may uh, elect to use the hoop uh, plate. And we've discussed together the algorithm for the treatment of the posterior plateau fractures. Thank you very much.